No! What's gone wrong here? What has gone wrong in the church? See, you can't judge a Christian just by a person saying, I'm a Christian. You, 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 can't, you, you can't tell unless they have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost dwelling within them. Because when you have the Holy Ghost dwelling in you, you're going to want to shout. You're going to want to sing those songs and get excited. You're going to want to pray and get excited. You're going to want to let the neighborhood know that I am standing for what is righteous. I'm going to stand for what is right. And I'm going to speak out for God and say, no, that is wrong. I'm voting against it. We don't need another gay pervert in the, in the White House or in the City Hall. We don't need it. That is not of God. We need to speak out as Christians and let the world know that there is a, a great number of us who are the bride of Christ. Because if you can't do that, you don't deserve to wear the wedding garment. You don't deserve to sit down at the feast, the wedding feast. You are a perpetrator. You've been scammed. Just like Judas was. Because you allowed yourself to grow weak. You have allowed the things of the world take over your lifestyle. You are no longer willing to be righteous and whole. But Jesus wants you. He's called you. I don't care if you just came out of prison or just came out of jail. Jesus has a purpose for your life. Amen. He has a purpose for you. You could change your ways and become the new creature in Christ that He has called you to do. You can call back upon these old things and say, this is what God has delivered me from. I am no longer a drug addict. I'm no longer a pervert. I am no longer a molester. I am no longer a whoremonger. I'm no longer a drunk. Because I stand on the word of Jesus Christ and His blood has washed me as white as snow and I'm going to stand up against you. Amen. 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 See, but you'd be surprised. I've gone to, a, I've been down in Olympia several times and I have gone before Senators and congressmen, they don't like me too well. <laughs> Believe me, Patty Murray, I'm not on her best list. <laughs> Maria Cantwell, I'm not on her best list. Our dear beloved governor hung up on me. I was on a, he called me for a special conference call and invited me to a special conference call. Well, that didn't last too long when I asked him a few questions when he was running for office. And I asked him if he's changed his ways. <laughs> Are you still supporting this? Are you still supporting that? Are you still supporting all kinds of... Yes, yes, yes. Well, I can't vote for you. You're not standing for Jesus Christ. You know, th th that isn't what God would have us do. Show me in the Bible where God says it's okay to murder unborn children. Show me in the scripture where God says it's okay to have sex with your own mate, with your own kind. Show me. Show me in the Bible where God says my tax dollars can pay for drug-free rooms where we can go in and shoot up heroin because we don't want the people dying on the street shooting up. Why are we wasting our tax dollars on stuff like that? Where are the churches? Where are the true believers? You are, if you say that you are a man or a woman of God or a child of God, why aren't we speaking out? Why aren't we showing the light and being the light? This body 
is supposed to be the temple of God. This body will be left behind. That's one of the great stories I like about in the Old Testament where it talks about the tabernacle and the tabernacle is being rebuilt right now as we speak it. And in that tabernacle they had special things. The lampstand. If we have the light in, in us, which is Jesus Christ, that's what the lampstand's all about. People would see that the Ark of the Covenant. Why aren't we practicing that? Why are we coming back to what Jesus once wanted us to be? What God, His Heavenly Father, wanted us to be? Men and women of God. God so loved the world that He wanted to be with His people. Did you know in the Old Testament was the Holy Spirit that God Himself came down and sat on the throne on the Ark of the Covenant. God was there all the time. He never left us. The Savior came. He sent His Savior, Jesus Christ, to make a way out of no way for each and every one of us, for the Jews and the Gentiles. He was the saving grace. If we follow Him and go not just to the cross and kneel and confess your sins, but to go through the cross and live it. That's what we're not doing. We're apocalyptic Christians. We need to repent. Until I see the church repent, I'll bring suffering and I'll bring wrath on your nation. That's what he did to Israel and that's what he's going to do to America. Because America was the only other covenant nation. We were a covenant people. And we are the ones that broke that covenant. And then there are those that have broke their own covenant with God because they went to the altar and they knelt and they asked God to forgive them. But when they left the altar, they left the cross behind. They didn't go through the cross. They went their old way and they rolled in the dirt and they wanted to be righteously right. They didn't want to stand out and be different in the room. They didn't want somebody to look at that guy. He is a Jesus free. My, my. He shouts hallelujah for the Lord. Woo. I can't take that. He confesses that he has a personal relationship with God. He says that he knows Jesus personally. Can you believe that? <laughs> you know what? Sometimes when I listen to him speak, he sounds like he's talking like Jesus, too. <laughs> he sounds like those things that come out of his mouth. Sounds like there's something like Jesus would say. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if we can be guilty of that? Wouldn't you want to be guilty of that? How many of you in this room can honestly say, that if something happened, because any time, any moment, this ground beneath us can open up and swallow us. Did you know that happened over in Israel? Did you know that's going to happen on the Mount of Olives? It's going to open up. When, when the Messiah comes back, it's going to open up and it's going to swallow thousands of people. In the Old Testament, the ground opened up and swallowed thousands of people because they were serving other gods. And Moses warned them time and time again. But they didn't listen. Now, today, we have people that are anointed by God that is preaching and teaching the true Word of God, an uncompromised Word 
and they're not allowed in churches because they don't pansy foot around. They're not of the cruise ship mentality. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. You either choose God and go His way or you go straight to hell and you don't collect $200. <laughs> Now, there's a lot of people that think, well, I've heard that message before. I've heard that said time and time again, and I haven't seen Jesus come yet. Well, I want to tell you something right now. Something that you probably don't know unless you study history. And you can't get true history from the news channel. I'll tell you that. You cannot get it from NBC, CBS, Fox, or CNN. You have to have the Word of God in your hand. And this is why I'm saying, if you have the Bible right there in front of you in your hand and compare it to what's happening in the news today, if you have any fear of God, you should be shaken in your boots. And I'm not kidding you. You need to put your war clothes on. You need to put the salvation, the helmet of salvation on. The breastplate of righteousness on. And gird your loins. Because, I'll tell you what, we are so close to something catastrophically happening that will never change. We have almost, if not, I think in my own opinion, I think America has sealed its destiny. We have sealed it. There's only so much a president can do. But it's the body of Christ that had to move. And we, the church, have refused to hear God's cry. There's been the trumpets been sounded. People have been out trying to sound the trumpet. Trying to warn the people. Trying to say we've got to get rid of these congressmen and these senators that don't have the same principles and values that my Savior has. We've got to clean them out. And it's our responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility that chooses the pathway of God. And if you don't, you'll be accountable for it. But see, in the church, they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that you'll be accountable for it. They just kind of let it slide under the carpet. Oh, here's a little patch of dust. I'm going to move that over here. Well, we've got a meeting. We've got a, we got, we got a church service. We're going to have a prayer service. Well, just sweep that dust underneath the carpet there. Nobody will notice it. That's the kind of attitude we have. But we can't do that any longer. We need to be serious. Every day counts. You're on borrowed time. Each and every one of us are on borrowed time. That's why we need God. And that's why we need Him on our side. Now I know every one of us in this room is a sinner. You know how I know that? The Bible tells me that. God says all mankind is a sinner. The only truth and righteous there is is the Word of God. Now, if you don't have that dwelling in you, you have no truth and honesty about you. We've seen what liars and thieves and thugs do in the offices of this land. We've seen what people who come in the name of the Lord, the people who the Bible calls wolves in sheep's clothing, and if you don't have the Word of God in you, how do you know 
if that person that's standing in the pulpit isn't a wolf that's in sheep's clothing. Without the Word of God, you cannot tell the book from its cover. So you've got to have the Holy Spirit in you. It no longer is, well, maybe, well, there's always tomorrow because there's no, 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 not, not, not with God. It's now or never. And God wants us to move now. I know there's some of us in this room right now, I know this, that are taking this, yeah, I've heard this before. I still like to go my old ways. I like to party and have a good time. Well, I want to tell you something. I have a good time. And I like to party singing worship songs. And I like to smile. And I like to be happy. I mean, after all, my last name is Jolly. And I tell you what. God gave me that name. And I'm going to live up to it. And you can be Jolly for the Lord. You can be happy for him. My first name is Melvin. If only, if only I can live up to just a portion of what Melchizedek was, I'd be one proud man. I'd be one happy man. See, we got to know history. That's why it's so, so important for you to take your Word of God, your Bible, and relate it to the things that are happening to you and happening to you every day in the news. You've got to be able to call the people on their wrong. Hold their feet to the fire. Because that's what God has asked us to. I'm going to ask my wife to come to the keyboard She's going to play a special song for, for me. It's a song that she's written. God hears the prayers of His children. Because He does. He hears our prayers. <laughs>